Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International, the global leader in regenerative therapies. So first of all, before I start, I want to mention that I wrote a guide to stem cell therapy for autism. It has a lot of great information and it. it's a free download. Just go to stemcellautism.com um, and it's right there for the download. All right, what is autism spectrum disorder? Well, it includes several conditions that used to be diagnosed separately. Autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, and Asperger syndrome. They all include difficulty with communication and interaction with other people. Also, restricted interests and repetitive behaviors are usually seen. And it may be symptoms that hurt the person's ability to function properly in school work and other areas of life. How common is it? Well, the latest data around the world shows that 1 in 54 children are diagnosed with ASD. I saw a statistic from the Autism Society of Western Australia that says 1 in 100. It can be a little confusing because it used to be that statistics were centered around a diagnosis of autism. Now with ASD, including the others, it can be much higher, so it's probably somewhere between those two. Um, Autism ASD is four times more common in boys than girls, but it has been reported in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. So how is it diagnosed? It's not always easy. It's not like you do a lab test and you say, oh, this child has you know, ASD, as if you were diagnosing you know, high cholesterol. It doesn't work like that. Usually it's a wide range of symptoms. There's a two-step process with a pediatric assessment. And then there's a team of specialists, potentially, who evaluate. Um, the uh, issues are, are really two categories, communication and social interaction, along with restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior. So traditional treatments, um, there's really no one standard treatment. There's no cure available. Um, it focuses on each child's specific needs, which could be uh, behavioral management, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, school-based therapies, medications, nutrition, OT and PT, and possibly speech therapy. Um, there's also medications that are uh, off-label that may be used. Um, SSRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, antipsychotics, possibly stimulants or anti-anxiety medications, and anticonvulsants. Um, none of these are specifically approved on-label around the world for autism, um, but Sometimes they're used off-label, and they all usually have some side effects that are not so exciting. Um, so when you look at stem cell therapy for autism spectrum disorder, it's incredibly exciting. We've been offering these treatments for seven years now, um, and treatments to date have focused on the use of what's called multipotent stem cells, such as mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. There are multiple mechanisms of action that we know of, and then probably quite a few that we don't know of. One of the main things they do is reduce inflammation, they modulate the immune system, they create new blood vessels, and offer cell-to-cell -cell signaling for reprogramming and creation of new neurons, new neural networks, and so forth. So it's not a cure. There is no cure, but as you'll see, it can dramatically help. We call it mitigation. Um, recent evidence suggests that immune dysregulation and neuroinflammation play a role in the cause of ASD, and that's two of the main things that stem cells are really good at fixing. Um, let's go through a few studies. Uh, this was in the World Journal of Stem Cells, 2019. Um, Mesenchymal stem cells can be transplanted directly without genetic modification or pretreatment and differentiated according to the cues from the surrounding tissues and do not cause uncontrollable growth or tumors. With a mesenchymal stem cell treatment, you don't have to worry about tumor growth. Uh, with the stem cells we use, you don't have to worry about rejection either. I'll explain why in just a moment. Several proof-of-concept clinical studies um, have shown that safety and efficacy of mesenchymal stem cells in autistic patients. Now, when you talk about the type of stem cells, one of the things that is not ready to be used are embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells. The embryonic ones, ones do come from aborted fetuses. 
They lead to a rejection. They can cause tumors. So if anyone suggests that you undergo an em- your child undergo an embryonic stem cell therapy, run away. The ones that we use are very safe with mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. All right, there have been excellent results to date. Um, there have been uh, several clinical studies published. Here's a table showing several of them. Um, you can see that <clears throat> whether it's using the child's own stem cells, known as autologous, or allogeneic from a donor, if you look over to where it says primary outcomes, you can see in this one there was improvements in cognitive and social tasks um, and improvement in uh, perfusion of brain areas. This one uh, talks about improvements in stereotypic behavior and uh, social withdrawal, um, improvements in uh, cognitive ability, behaviors. Um, This one had no improvements. And in the bottom, more improvements in socialization, communication, and adaptive behavior. So over and over again, we're seeing statistically significant improvements in various categories. We wrote a paper with our research team, um, The Promise of Autologous and Allogeneic Cellular Therapies in the Clinical Trials of Autism Spectrum Disorder. Uh, This was published last year. Um, And what we did was we reviewed all of the clinical trials available, um, whether they were autologous, using a patient's own tissue, or allogeneic. We looked at uh, two studies, using uh, bone marrow stem cells, and then three studies using umbilical cord blood. That's when the, the child, the family had their child's uh, umbilical cord available uh, for use, their own. And then allogeneic, there was um, one study using umbilical cord tissue mesenchymal cells. Um, another one was um, a study with umbilical cord blood, um, and then there was one with both umbilical cord stem cells and umbilical cord blood um, as well. So the one that was extremely impressive that we reviewed is a study out of China from a few years ago where they conducted a clinical trial to measure the safety, feasibility, and effectiveness of both umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells and umbilical cord blood. It was open label, so there was no secret as to what these children were receiving. Um, and 37 um, autistic subjects were enrolled. Um, Patients received both cord blood cells and umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. There was no adverse events um, except for a low-grade fever that was temporary. The significant changes observed included improved social and behavioral withdrawals, enhanced eye contact, less emotional and aggressive response, adaptability, and less hyperactivation and unstable speech patterns. At six months follow-up, the results were compared with the control group and considerably higher improvements weren't seen in the combination group. So we see these all the time, exactly what what they showed. Um, No significant adverse events. We do see low-grade fever frequently, um, and these improvements are exactly what we see um, in our patients. Here's a study out of Panama um, out of 2019. This study was uh, retracted. And the reason it was retracted from publication was because patients were charged for the treatment, which is interesting um, and a little bit ridiculous that they had to retract it because the FDA allows um, for clinical trials uh, to have a charge to the patient. so I don't understand why they, but it was a very well done study. It was 20 patients. Uh, they received a total of 144 million umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells over four treatments. Periodic psych evals showed that the group of children uh, presented improvements um, with increased awareness, noticeable improvements in social communication, uh, motor ability. Um, some had uh, increases in uh, anxiety. And they observed that most of the treatment effects were uh, improvements lasted about six months. What we see is that they usually don't regress. They usually uh, improve for six months and then baseline. um, But there are occasionally few who do regress a bit. Um, This was a study uh, from Duke University in 2017 where they used the child's own umbilical cord um, with their blood. 25 kids, um, 
with either one to five million stem cells per kilogram, uh, so 10 to 50 million per kilogram. Um, yeah, I had that wrong, 10 to 50. And they did an IV infusion only. Um, I think that IV infusion itself is uh, suboptimal because stem cells are larger than what the blood-brain barrier allows to get into the brain. So we do both. We do both an IV therapy along with what's called intrathecal, which involves an injection simply into the back, into the spinal canal, so stem cells can get to the brain. Uh, it's been shown to be very safe. We've done it hundreds and hundreds of times. And then in this Duke study, they showed it was safe. They showed significant improvements in behavior um, that was sustained for a year. For the R3 Stem Cell International Autism Program, this is where I need to mention that stem cell therapy in Australia is actually not allowed. So we perform the treatments in three countries right now, uh, Manila in the Philippines, Islamabad in Pakistan, and in Mexico at two locations. Uh, we do have other locations that are coming on board. Um, the process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors. We've done, to this point, between all of our locations, probably over 500 um, autism cases. You'll have a patient concierge representative to assist with all the travel logistics, including travel from the airport to the clinic and back. The cells uh, for the procedure come from an FDA-regulated and registered lab um, that has a pristine safety record. Uh, the quality assurance for the stem cells exceeds FDA standards. Um, the umbilical cord tissue comes from a consenting donor um, after a scheduled C-section. There's no harm to the baby or the mother. The mother undergoes a humongous questionnaire that our medical director reviews. And also the tissue itself is sent out for disease testing as well as testing for bacteria, virus, fungus, um, and only if all of that comes back negative can any of the stem cells be used. We use um, the smallest amount of cryopreservative necessary. We get over 90% viability with the cells. Um, we are allowed to culture for stem cells used outside the United States, and we make sure that it's below the fourth passage, usually below the third, um, and these to make sure that they're pure and potent um, for, for the patients. Um, now, we do include ground transportation. We do include two nights uh, hotel for the family. The, cell, the number of cells are determined by the child's weight in kilograms. Uh, so many uh, families come to us and say, hey, I had it done at this particular clinic and it didn't work well enough. Usually it's because they didn't get enough cells. Uh, time and time again, we see that. And not only that, but the family was charged too much. So in Panama or China or some of these countries, they'll charge you 25, 30,000 US dollars for treatment. And, and that's just insane because as I mentioned, usually the family's gonna get a repeat therapy for their child once a year. We have some who do it every 18 months or even every six months, but it needs to be cost effective, right? Or it becomes cost prohibitive and ridiculous. So we are the most cost effective stem cell therapy clinics in the world. We've done over 23,000 total stem cell procedures. So with that type of volume, we've been able to bring our pricing down for uh, patients and their families. And I put be careful here because there's a lot of clinics out there that you know don't uh, stand behind what they do. They haven't been around for very long. You know They don't have like 45 centers in six countries like we do. And you just need to be careful. Uh, one of our biggest competitors in the Philippines uses sheep stem cells. Um, I have no idea why they do that. Um, I've tried to look it up and, and see if there's any research on sheep stem cells in humans. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, so what makes sense to me is an evidence-based approach like we use with quality assurance standards that are very, very high, um, outcomes that have been shown over the years to be fantastic and um, pricing that is uh, affordable. 
Once again, I wrote uh, a free guide to stem cell therapy for autism. If you go to stemcellautism.com, there's a download link. All you need to put in is your email address so it gets sent to you. All right, to start the process, uh, you can call us either at the number on r3stemcell.com slash Australia or our U.S. number, which is a plus one prefix, 888-988-0515. We'd love to speak with you. It's a free consultation, um, and we'll let you know if uh, your child's a candidate um, and what it will uh, be entailed. Thanks for watching.